The Windows Recovery Environment, or Windows RE, is a very important recovery environment that uh, described here can assist you with repairing all kinds of common causes of unbootable operating systems. It comes built into Windows 10 for desktop, home, pro, and two, uh, server 2016. This document here talks a little bit about what you can do with it. Uh, the tools that are included and how to activate Windows RE if necessary, as well as some um, important information about uh, the differences between a, a master boot record uh, based system and a UEFI based system, where it lives, customizations, all kinds of things like that. I think it's very important to understand how to enable and disable it if, it's, uh, if that is a situation and where exactly it lives in all the different partitioning schemes. Let's have a look at that next. Before we go too far into where Windows RE files might be located, we first have to talk about whether or not it's an old computer that uses uh, tra the traditional BIOS, or perhaps it's a modern computer that uses the more modern version of the, uh, the replacement for the BIOS called the UEFI. Now, in the case of um, a clean machine that's been uh, where it's operating system disk has been installed in a in a traditional BIOS environment like this one. Um, I created this Windows 10 home operating system disk. Um, I created the partition prior to the installation of Windows. And this partition, since it existed, uh, Windows had no ch uh, chance to try to do any uh, uh, re additional partitioning with it. So it was forced to have the operating system land on a single partition. And in this situation, you'll see here that system is indicative of the fact that this traditional BIOS installation has the uh, Windows RE landing in this on this single partition. Now that might be a little different than this system here where um, it's an identical Windows 10 installation and it's also on a 100 gigabyte hard drive but I let Windows do what it wanted to do to this drive. Um, this disk, for example, might have been formatted or I formatted with the, the tools at the time of installation. And in that situation, Windows had a chance to repartition it um, out of my control, really. And in that situation, it creates a system reserved partition that's, that's actually hidden. And then the operating system partition lands over here. And in this situation, this is, this is the system. It's independent of the operating system. Whereas remember back here, this is the entire hard drive partition, the C drive, the operating system, everything is self-contained, including the system. And in this one, again, the, the system is outside of the operating system drive and its own system reserved partition. Now that's in contrast to a machine that I built from scratch from the ground up um, on a virtual machine that had a UEFI style firmware. And in that situation, what it did is it created a 529, I didn't make this up, this is all automatic, it created a 529 megabyte recovery partition. It doesn't mention anything about system here. It's got a 100 megabyte EFI system partition, but don't let that get confuse the the recovery uh, when when w when re is is over here and this is where the operating system is over here now that's a little different in the world of uh, machines that you buy out of the box uh, these is, again i'm talking to you about machines that i've built from scratch um, this is a an example of a of an asus uh, uefi modern machine that i own and uh, i installed uh, windows on it using the uefi style uh, installation and it also created a recovery partition 
um, over here at the beginning of the disk, 100 meg, just like we saw before, and a uh, 30, less than 28 gigabyte uh, C partition at the end. And here is a, a Lenovo E575 that I happen to have access to. And this is a factory install, and it's a little way different. It's got an EFI system partition at the beginning. Um, I've modified this C drive because it was too big to begin with. I actually shrunk the C drive, created a, a D partition here, but pretend that this wasn't done. Pretend all of this is the C drive. And in this situation, the recovery partition and where the WinRE files is actually living at the end of the disk. So the location of your WinRE files kind of completely depends on whether or not it's a traditional BIOS, whether or not it's a UEFI, and it also greatly involves whether or not it's coming from a manufacturer installation which has been customized or not. Let's still try to find where these important Windows RE files using some external tools. Microsoft includes a tool called the RE Agent C that offers up some command line options, which we'll use. It's a very powerful tool. You don't want to play with it without understanding what you're doing. Um, but one of the simpler options is just to simply list um, the info switch like this. So re, I say re agent C slash info. And what it'll do is tell you whether or not the Windows RE is enabled or disabled. You can use the same command to enable or disable. What I'm interested in is uh, finding out where this, this particular Windows RE exists and where it lives. On this system, it lives on hard disk zero on the first partition and a recovery Windows RE location. So if I was to look again at our disk environment, this is the first partition. I can't, this, this um, partition is not assigned a drive letter. It's hidden from view. I can't open this particular partition. So I won't be able to see it with a, with a Windows tool like this. However, if I go over to a different system like this one, where the C drive and, and the system partition are all self-contained, I can run the same command as I've done here, and I'll see it's the same situation. The Windows RE is enabled and it lives in hard disk zero partition one in the same location. So you think to yourself, all right, I'll just browse for that place. Here I am in this disk and I don't see a recovery uh, directory. And I think, all right, well, I'll just go ahead and poke around with these permission options that you might be familiar with. And I'm going to say, just don't hide anything. Show me everything, ignoring all the warnings. And great, I can now see the recovery partition. But when I click it, I still have permissions issues. I don't have permissions. And I wouldn't recommend starting to monkey around with the permissions here to try to, to see what's inside of there. I would rather do it from an external, uh, using boot from an external uh, operating system. Uh, from my experience, I wasn't able to use Windows PE or any other tools. I had to use actually a, a Linux distribution to be able to see this. And that Linux distribution depended upon whether or not I was using an MBR style environment or a UEFI environment. I'll do that next. Now there might be a better tool for this job, but I'm going to go back to the familiar. Um, Rescue is possible Linux is a is a discontinued but still quite a powerful Linux distribution that uh, we'll be using to look at our Windows 10 MBR install to uh, find the Windows RE directory. Um, it's uh, still possible to find uh, an older version of this thing. Unfortunately, it hasn't been developed for a long time. And um, <clears throat> for our UEFI style systems, we do need something a little more modern. So I've gone ahead and downloaded uh, the System Rescue CD. If you're interested in the size of these things, the uh, RIP Linux ISO is 159 megabytes, whereas the more modern System Rescue CD is quite a bit bigger, getting close to 700 megabytes. I'll shut these systems down and uh, boot them up, uh, showing you the Rescue uh, is possible and System Rescue CD um, boot up processes next.
I've booted, I've prepared my first um, machine here. This is the single disk um, MBR or BIOS style machine that I'm going to boot up with the rescue as possible disk here. I'll turn on the machine. It'll take a few moments to boot, but first of course I'm presented with this installation uh, booting choice. There are a lot of selections here. What we want to do is we want to boot into a GUI which is called X windowing environment or X and um, I want to skip the, the the key mapping prompt which it would normally ask me what kind of keyboard I have. It'll assume a US keyboard if I say skip. So this is the one I want to choose. And it'll take a little while for the kernel to probe the, um, the hardware on this virtual machine and, and give me control over the system. Maybe less than 30 seconds. The reason why I'm choosing to use a Linux distribution is because uh, any of the Windows PE environments or many of the PE environments that you have available will still run into permissions issues trying to see the Windows RE uh, location and some of them won't even see the hidden partition just because of the nature of the way they're designed. I'm trying to get control of my mouse here. I'll see if I can do it without it. It's obviously a little fun inside of this environment. Now what I'm going to do is show you that this tool does have a mount and unmount option. It is a little bit dangerous to use this mount and unmount because it is going to try to mount this um, environment with a uh, read-write permissions, which I'm not a big fan of. So I'm just showing you this mount and unmount uh, GUI by right-clicking here. The drive that we're going to mount is actually SDA1. And we're going to do we're going to mount that uh, using uh, whoops I didn't mean that we're going to mount that using uh, a read-only uh, parameter here. So I'll leave that uh, pathway to the to the device open. We're just going to do a mount. Um, you could say minus R or minus O. Um, this will do the same thing. Hopefully, whoops, I'm just going to say minus R. I believe that will work here. The type of file system is NTFS. Um, the, the device that we're going to mount is uh, SDA1. And I've forgotten to create a, a separate file for a mount point. So I'm just going to specify mount. It's not really conventional, but this should work. Good. So I have mounted read only hopefully let's just validate that uh, here it is here we are read only it's just a little bit safer to mount things read only so my sda1 which is the the device letter for the the first partition on this disk which is the 100 gig uh, c drive is now mounted under mount and now if i simply go to a application i want to see if i can find a file manager of some form. Um, sorry, I went up one. X, it's hard to drive with this mouse. XFE is a pretty decent file manager. And if I go to the mount point, this is a read only mount of the C drive. And if I look for recovery and then Windows RE, here are the three files that we were looking for. This is the Windows RE. You'll notice that is 418 megabytes in size. There's an XML file that's very important and a boot.sdi that's also important. It's three megs in size. So obviously this is where the Windows RE lives. It's in the, the C drive in, on this particular system. Um, in the recovery under under Windows RE, and this is the all-important Windows RE file. So we validated that. Let's get out of here safely. We'll just do a U-mount. We can do it this way. Or you could have optionally actually used this mount tool, which it's, it's too late to do it now, but we could have used this had that uh, 
that drive still been mounted, I could have used this. This would have actually said unmount or U-mount right here. The drive is safely unmounted, and now we can uh, exit out of this application, uh, exit out of this operating system, and shut the system down. I'll do that right now if I can. <laughs> I don't have the same kind of control as I do with this mouse, so I'll just say halt and power off the system. So there is Rescue is Possible Linux using a single disk um, uh, Windows 10 operating system, single partition. Let's do the same process with the system reserved, the next system over, just in one moment. Okay, we've got a, um, a traditional BIOS style machine here with uh, two partitions, the native system reserve partition where we hope that the uh, Windows RE lives and the operating system partition here. The uh, Linux rescue disk is, is already mounted and let's hope that we can simply restart this machine and it will start to boot from the rescue is possible disk. Good stuff. We'll go down a few to this one. This is all the same as the other previous chapter. Okay, we're almost there. Hopefully I have control this time. I'm going to save this, I'm going to start this mount tool, but I'm not going to utilize it to mount, just to demonstrate safety here. We don't want to mount something critical like that with read-write permissions. And so the SDA1 in this situation is the first partition, of course, but it's the 579 meg partition. The operating system is on the second partition. Remember how we had the system reserved and then the operating system? So we're going to be mounting SDA1 as well. However, it's, uh, it's not where the operating system lives. So let's go to X term, and we're gonna do the same thing with mount read only. We're going to specify SDA1 and unfortunately I still made a mistake and I didn't specify a different mount point but that's okay for this test. Um, we're going to just validate that it's read only and here it is. Yes it is read only and I don't know what that message was there and we're going to right click and go to our application, back to our file manager, carefully go down to XFE, and we're going to go to this mount point, and go to recovery, and Windows RE. So there we go. We've demonstrated that the Windows RE files on this system live in the system reserve partition that is independent of the operating system partition. Remember, the operating system lives in this 100 gig partition, or less than 100 gig partition. This small little 579 is where this, the uh, Windows RE is living in this situation. Now, to demonstrate how to utilize this tool to cheat and do an unmount, I'm just going to go this way. You'll see that um, this tool is good for both mounting and unmounting. I'll just highlight this and say unmount. In fact, I'll have to use my mouse. Good. We can validate just by typing mount here. I don't see it on the list, so it's now unmounted. So we have validated the existence of Windows RE on a, a uh, a BIOS style computer with two partitions. 
Now let's move on to the next one over, which is a, a UAFI style environment. We will not be able to use Rescue is Possible Linux. It's too old and it's not, uh, it does not support UEFI. So we'll move on to System Rescue CD for that one. Here's a Windows 10 with UEFI firmware, clean install, factory, which created the 529 megabyte recovery partition, uh, the 100 meg EFI system partition in the middle, and the C drive over here, the rest of this 100 gig hard drive. We suspect that um, Windows RE is located in the recovery partition and I have the system rescue CD installed and ready to go in the system. Now I have to shut down the computer on this system and uh, do a little bit of Kung Fu to get into the BIOS to boot from this disk but you wouldn't normally have to do that in a real physical machine. Just wait for the system to shut down. Then I'll power on to the firmware. And I'm going to go down to manually pick the CD-ROM and hit enter using default options. Now the tool is completely booted, but uh, we would, in our situation, it'd be nice to get into a graphical user interface environment. So I'm going to, uh, as the screen says, I'm going to type start X, which will start the X windowing environment. Now once that's started, we can sort of cheat and take advantage of this tool here. This is a partition tool. You don't want to experiment with this unless you know what you're doing. But it's going to give us a simple GUI to see where our partitions are. SDA. SDA is our first disk. And there are four partitions on SDA. The basic data partition, as this is called, it's, it's got a label of recovery. That's the disk actually where we suspect the Windows RE is. We have a EFI system partition that we saw before, 100 gig. Um, we have our operating system partition where the C drive lives. And then between it, there's a little bit of space that has uh, not been seen before. I don't know if that's an error or just a bad alignment or something like that. We're just going to ignore that. We're really more interested in this SDA1. Now don't use this tool unless you know what you're doing. It is very powerful. We're just going to use it to get our reference. Now again from the command line, let's pop open here. The correct way to mount things is not to use the mount point. It's to actually use um, a, a different uh, location. So I'll just do a make dir we're going to call it uh, mount, and we'll just call it SDA1. I know that doesn't exist already. And then we're going to mount um, read only minus type NTFS, the device, did I make a mistake, SDA1, and the mount point. We could have left mount, but it's really better to do this. Hopefully this will work. Awesome. Let's type mount and we'll see here that our drive is mounted properly on SDA1 and it's read only, which is what we want to see. I can just take advantage of this link here, go to the file system, go to mount and go to SDA1. So now we're looking at our first partition on this disk. Here's recovery, Windows RE. That's what we would expect. Again, 418 meg, exactly what we're looking for. Our XML file, an important boot file. Awesome. So that's exactly what we would ex expect. 
let's unmount this spot. In this case, it's this guy. Let's exit out of here. And we're going to shut this down. So we validated the existence of Windows RE in, in essentially in three different computer systems. One with a, a single disk BIOS, a two a single disk one partition BIOS, a single disk two partition BIOS, and a traditional UEFI style firmware. I hope this helps. We spent a lot of time finding where Windows RE might live. Now let's see how Windows RE is useful to us. I have two systems here. Um, this is uh, up here. I've intentionally stretched out this view so you can see this is a Windows 1064 traditional BIOS computer. And then this machine here is a Windows 1064 um, UEFI machine and the interaction with Windows RE is uh, slightly different. That is, the um, some of the features are, are different in the UEFI version, which makes sense. Let's first um, show that the reagent C command with inf the info switch shows that Windows RE is enabled. We'll do the same thing over here in our 64-bit uh, UEFI machine. So, it is enabled on both machines. I'm going to exit out of there. Exit out of there. And we'll boot each machine up and access this menu. The quickest way I found to get there is just by hit, typing reset and say reset this PC. And then right up here, there's a restart now button. We'll hit that. I'll, I'll wait here for it to get to the first menu. And then let's do the same thing over on this other machine. So start, reset, click reset this PC and restart now. I'll wait to show you that it boots to the same menu. Now they are slightly different. If you can see this first one has uh, just continue to Windows, turn off the PC and, and troubleshoot. This one has continue to Windows. Um, however, it, there's an additional um, entry here for using a USB device, network connection, or Windows recovery DVD. This is because this is an EFI system and it's a little bit special getting access to these devices. You can do it from here, which is kind of cool. Let's come back over to this machine as, as there was no UEFI uh, options necessary. Obviously, this is a BIOS firmware, but I'm going to go to Troubleshoot. And let's go over here and hit Troubleshoot as well. So these look identical, which makes sense. Let's go to Advanced Options on the uh, BIOS system and we'll go to advanced options on the UFI system. There's a, a slight difference. This is everything. So startup repair, modifying startup settings, a command prompt, the ability to uninstall updates, which is really important in case there's some kind of a issue of a recent quality update or a feature update, you can use this to uninstall it. It's kind of important lately. You have access to uh, using or accessing your system restore points if you were making them and the all important access to the system image recovery which we will do uh, many times in our uh, backup videos backup and restoration videos let's look at how slightly different this is we still have startup repair startup settings and command prompt the uninstall of updates is the same but we have one additional um, checkbox, or one additional button here, is, which is to go into the UEFI firmware from here, which is kind of interesting. This, button, this single button, if I clicked it and hit restart, it will actually reboot this computer into the UEFI firmware area. Now there's nothing else that's different except uh, 
the system restore is, is the same and the location of the system image recovery is simply on the next page, which is kind of cool. So let's poke around a little bit more with some of the more fancier uh, features of Windows RE in the next chapter. You may have a situation where Windows RE is in fact disabled. I have a system like that and I have no idea how it became disabled. And that was actually the, the precipice for creating these videos. So I will demonstrate how to disable it here. I'm going to uh, run a command prompt and you have to run it as administrator to access these more powerful commands. Again, it's the, the reagent C and I'll demonstrate that it is still enabled. And then I'm just going to say disable. Wait for a few moments and validate that it is in fact disabled. Okay. Now just for the fun of it, let's do it on both machines. So again, start CMD. This is the way I do it. There might be a faster way. Run it as, run command as administrator. Again, agent C. It's it's enabled. We're going to disable it and validate it is disabled. Okay, so they're both disabled. Let's clean both command prompts away. And then we'll reset the PC and see what the interaction is now with a disabled Windows RE. The files are obviously still where they lived, um, but the interaction with the menu is going to be totally different. If you see here, when I go to troubleshoot, all I have is the ability to modify the startup settings. I lost all other options of recovering and command prompts and stuff like that. Let's do the same thing with this machine, the, U the UEFI firmware. Reset this PC. So luckily we do still have access to booting from various devices in a, in a disabled machine, but under troubleshoot, we, interestingly, we have uh, the additional access to the UEFI firmwares, but the only other thing I can do is go to the startup settings of the machine and modify that. I don't see any of the other options. Now, some um, OEM computer makers or security people might actually have disabled you, um, Windows RE intentionally just for security purposes so you can't go in and modify the system. But in my situation, I have no idea how Windows RE got disabled and I'm troubleshooting that right now, uh, but just making notes as I learn Windows RE uh, through the process. So if you're in that situation, it's just hopefully uh, a process of using the reagent C command with the enable switch, which will bring this system back to the way it was in the previous chapter. But now let's actually play around with some of the advanced features of Windows RE, which will definitely help you out in the future. Okay, so let's go through the exercise of re-enabling Windows RE just to show you that it is possible to enable and disable it at a, at a whim. I'll go to my command prompt as administrator. I'll show you it is disabled. And then I'll just simply say enable. show you it's enabled and then we'll go to it by reset. That was on our BIOS machine. And now let's do the same thing, sort of a refresher command, right click, run as administrator, Agency, 
let's show what its status is. It's disabled. Let's enable it. And then we'll show you it is enabled. And let's boot into it. So again, it's reset. Reset this PC and restart now. Okay, so it's enabled. Now let's start playing around with it. One of the first uh, more powerful uses of the Windows RE environment is the startup repair. So we'll first go to Troubleshoot, down to Advanced Options, and then Startup Repair is to fix problems that keep Windows from loading. Let's select that and let the system boot. I'll pause for a second till the next screen comes. It'll show you this. Please wait for a few minutes as it boots up. And then you're met with the requirement of logging in as a person to try to work on the system. That would be your username and your password. Now this system is, doesn't have any problems, so it's going to fail attempting to fix, just which makes sense. There's nothing to repair. I will uh, pause this and show you the next screen once this is done. Yes, as I mentioned, uh, there wasn't anything to repair, so um, the system is now just simply indicating that uh, you'll have to try some other advanced options or shut down the computer and there's a log file that's referenced. As there was nothing to repair, the system has sort of essentially failed this part. But it is pretty powerful in situations where your system won't boot. Let's get back into the Windows RE menu and look what other fun things we can do. One of the most powerful options of Windows RE is this reset this PC option. And there's two situations. We'll do this one live where we can tell it to keep my files. I want to remove apps and settings, but I want to keep my personal files. There's a second option where it will remove everything and reinstall Windows from scratch. All your stuff is gone. I'll show you what the interface looks like that. Once that's clicked, it will actually restart and give you two options. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, a few moments later, the system will boot and leave you with two choices. So the question is, do you want to fully clean your drive? When you remove your files, <clears throat> you can also clean the drive so that the files can't be recovered easily. This is more secure, but it takes much longer. So in option one, it's going to reinstall Windows and it's going to remove your files. Now, when Windows reinstalls files into space, that was once used, that data is pretty well gone. Um, there might be, there are situations where uh, data that is deleted and it's not, the space is not rewritten to by on, on other files, that information can still be retrieved. There are tools for undeleting and things like that that can actually find data that's available in space that hasn't been yet rewritten to. And in that situation, if you're really concerned, you can say fully clean the drive. It will do uh, a shred or a secure erase of that data. It'll erase all of the data. It does take a long time. And so if you're keeping your, your machine and you don't really care too much about that, that situation, just select this. It'll reinstall Windows and you'll be faced with the very beginning of the installation process where you have to start configuring Windows from the beginning. If you select this option, it'll look the same. It'll just take a lot longer and you'd use this situation if you wanted to give your PC away, give it to a friend, or just be super secure. 
Well, we're not going to do either of these on this situation. We're going to do a reset on this machine. Now on this machine, I have uh, a desktop that's got a lot of stuff on it. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, desktop is here. Whoops, I'll do it this way. We've got a full desktop. We've got one thing in, in documents, a couple things in uh, documents there. Uh, sorry, downloads, documents. We've got some simple uh, examples of music, some simple video files. I have not signed into OneDrive. Um, and I have uh, actually just recently done a Windows update just to see what is removed with the Windows update too. I'm curious about that. I haven't done the latest optional update, but as of today, uh, March the 29th, as it's all updated. Uh, we've got our update history here. We can show that uh, a bunch of things have been installed and a bunch of updates have been installed. And I'm also curious what gets destroyed with this update by looking at the um, the control panel program and features. So we've got OneDrive, a couple of uh, Visual C++ files. I've installed some apps, uh, Firefox really, and VMware tools as we're working with VMware. So let's just see what the implications are if we do a reset and keep the files. We'll do that now. Reset this PC. Restart now. And we'll go to Troubleshoot, reset this PC, and then keep my files. I'll come back to this if there is another option to be selected. Okay, so after a few moments, we're faced uh, an account requirement and a password requirement. And then resetting this PC, getting things ready. I'll pause this for a moment. Oh, don't have to pause. All ready to go. Make sure that your PC is plugged in and resetting will remove all apps and programs that didn't come with this PC. It'll change settings back to their defaults and it'll reinstall Windows without removing your personal files. Let's hit reset. The time is now 9.22. Let's see how long this takes. Hit reset now. And we'll come back to this when it's done. Look at the results. Okay, so now it's uh, 9.41 and it's uh, booted to a different colored screen installing to 65 percent we'll come back when it's even closer okay it's uh 9 48 now and we booted into uh windows for the first time i saw the login screen there for a second and uh, the typical few splash screens for a fresh install we'll come back in a sec see where we are Okay, our first Windows uh, uh, desktop look is done at 9.50. And if I remember correctly, if I go to this, uh, this on the desktop here, there's something called removed apps, a little HTML file, which will show us which apps are removed. And uh, interestingly, OneDrive is removed which is kind of interesting. It, it, you would think that was built into Windows, but it's, it's I guess, on the fringes. And we'll, we'll have to do this experiment again with, um, with OneDrive installed and configured and see what the ramifications are on that. The uh, C++'s are gone. Obviously, Firefox and its maintenance service are gone. And VMware Tools is gone, which makes sense. Now I can see my desktop files are still on my desktop, which is great. I, there they are. One thing still on downloads. 
a bunch of stuff in documents, pictures, music, and videos are still intact. Now what I am curious about is whether or not the Windows updates are current. Let's go to the view update history. And I don't think they are. And that would make sense. This thing would go back to a fresh install, which would imply that there's a plenty of Windows updates to do next. Uh, let's just check out the version, if that uh, helps. We could always use that as a reference. So keep that on the screen there for a second. I'll refer to that later on. Username, org name. So yeah, that's a, that's a reset my PC keeping my files. It actually works pretty good and it could work out to be a, an excellent way of getting your system back, preserving your files if necessary in a worst case scenario without actually having to resort to finding your original media. So on the next uh, attempt at this, I'm going to try to do it with a, a configured OneDrive. I'm curious if these files uh, on the desktop uh, move their location and things like that. As we know, OneDrive does some pretty hairy things with the locations of few of your libraries. We'll see that in the next chapter. So in this video, I wanted to see the effects of uh, doing a reset my PC on OneDrive. If you didn't know this, uh, once it, OneDrive is installed and configured, it likes to horse around with the location of your data. I'll uh, go to my user's home folder here and go to OneDrive, and you'll see that the desktop is uh, now populated with my desktop files, the documents are under OneDrive and the pictures. All of these things have been moved to a totally different location under OneDrive and they don't exist in the traditional locations uh, under user Steve. So the files have been moved over to a different location. Uh, it did leave behind uh, documents, uh, whatever this is, which is now blank and empty. And um, obviously videos is, is remaining in its original location, but it's really these three uh, libraries that I'm interested in seeing the repercussions on and uninstalling OneDrive. Since we saw that OneDrive is, a, is an application that gets removed when you do a reset the PC, let's see what the implications are on having your data in those directories and having uh, your reset my PC happen. So here we go. Reset this PC and I'm going to say yes I want to keep my files the system will reboot. It takes about uh, 40 minutes if I remember from the last attempt at doing this. So we'll come back when this is done. Uh, no, we're not done yet. I just wanted to, in case you jump to this chapter directly, the first question you get is uh, uh, an account required to continue and then the password for that account. And I'll go through this part here before pausing for the duration of the install. Okay, reset this PC, all ready to go. <clears throat> Make sure that your PC is plugged in. Resetting will remove all apps and programs that didn't come with this PC, change settings back to their defaults, and reinstall Windows without removing your personal files. Sounds cool. Let's hit reset. And now the timer begins. It's 10.02. Okay, so the reset my PC process is done and the results are kind of interesting. The, um, I'll have to show you. The best way to see where your files live is in users, Steve. So um, the documents uh, doesn't, your documents don't live in documents. There's no link to the traditional documents location with the stuff in it. Um, music is, thank goodness, is back to, well, not back, it, it was never lost. Same with videos. 
um, OneDrive, the OneDrive directory, whoops, and uh, and the contents of each still. Oh, this is going to bug me every time. Uh, Uh, so still exists one <laughs> you gotta be kidding me pictures come on come on where are you so yeah the the location of your files your libraries and your files for those three are still in the original location which is kind of strange there is no reference on the desktop to what was uninstalled if you remember with the previous example, it created an HTML file telling you what was uninstalled. Um, I'm curious if that might still be. Um, where were we? Where were we? Yeah, I won't be able to see the old desktop. Perhaps I did notice that it, it did create a Windows old and curious what is happening there nothing interesting now um, what's really even more interesting is if you have a look at uh, Windows updates and uh, the update history it, uh, that, I'm sorry, that is not interesting. That is just like the other example. This is a, a clean install with no updates. However, what I did find interesting was what was uninstalled. If I go to Programs and Features, you'll see that all the apps I had were uninstalled. That was 7-Zip and uh, Firefox and stuff like that. But uh, OneDrive remained installed, which was kind of necessary in a way because you had you were using it it was a an app that was configured very different than the previous example where OneDrive was not configured nor was it being used it was installed and in, it, in that situation it was removed but Microsoft made the choice of not uninstalling OneDrive in this situation which is kind of cool so there is a, a reset my PC uh, result with OneDrive installed and configured. I hope this helps. I'm curious how long this remove everything or keep my files uh, resetting PC uh, thing takes. So what we'll do, I've set up a stopwatch on the left side here. We're going to do a reset this PC first with the keep my files option. So this will uh, not do a secure erase or a shred of the data. So we'll do that first. I'm not going to start the stopwatch until the beginning of the process. So we have to get there after the machine boots up. I might have to resize. I'm just gonna grab control of my mouse here. Bring this down. Hopefully that won't blow up. There we go. Okay, so I have to log in or pr prove my capabilities of doing this. I'm going to hit continue and we're getting ready to do the faster of the two resets. Okay, I'm going to quickly run over here, hit the stopwatch, and then try to get focus on the machine and hit reset. So we'll be off by a few seconds, but that's okay. Hitting the stopwatch and reset. Okay, the process has started. If I remember correctly, it was Looking like 20 minutes, but I could be wrong. We'll be back when I see the f uh, when the first um, configuration screen is visible on the desktop. That is the the very first screen you would normally see when doing a fresh install of Windows 10. So we'll be back in a flash.
at around the 17 minute mark it switched over to a more entertaining screen saying installing windows still going but uh, at least something different to look at okay that little process went fairly quickly at 21 minutes it's doing a reboot <clears throat> Not too sure if this is one of many or if we're almost done. We'll come back when I have more definitive information. Oh, obviously not. Still going. Okay, I see our first login has completed and we're going through this traditional first few splash screens at around 30 minutes. So in a few more seconds, I'll be presented with the very first uh, Windows configuration screen. And I'd say that's, that's pretty well done. That's at 30 minutes. It's a good reference. This, by the way, is a virtual machine, but it's on a fairly powerful multi-core ZBook G3. Um, and it has two cores and I believe four gigabytes of RAM. So it's a fairly powerful computer. Um, the size of the disk is going to play part in how much data has to be shredded in, in the next example, um, which is 100 gig. So that could be a ballpark for doing something like this on a physical machine. But I'd say 30 minutes. I'll be uh, stopping this now and then I'll flip around and do the exact same experiment only with the secure erase option. We'll see how much time difference there is. Okay, so let's do a reset this PC, remove everything, which is going to include, I suspect, a secure erase. Let's get close to the beginning of this and we'll start the stopwatch. My guess is that it will take four times longer, but that's just a guess. It actually depends on how anal the security race is. There are different levels of uh, security that can be applied to the erase process. And I have no idea what they're doing. Getting things ready. All right, so we're going to do this fully clean the drive. And it can take several hours. Let's see about that. We're going to hit a start button on our stopwatch and then come over here to fully clean the drive. There it goes. So I'll come back in once in a while, see how things going. In the meantime, relax. Oops, I forgot. Let me, let me clear this. Let's assume that it hasn't started yet and we will do it from here. So reset this PC, all ready to go. Make sure it's plugged in. All the personal files and user accounts on this PC are gone. Any apps and programs that didn't come with this PC are toast and <clears throat> any messages, any changes made, it, made to settings are gonna be gone. All right, now this is the official start time. One, two, three, go. Okay, we'll come back and see how she's going as it goes through. Okay, so we're at 95%, uh, taking 34 minutes, not as long as I thought, but still a little bit longer. We'll check back in when we're closer to the end. Well, it looks like I missed the last few minutes. This, this occurred only in the last two minutes, um, the, the completion of this, so I'd say 40 minutes. It was actually only 10 minutes longer than the previous um, method, which was surprisingly fast. And that probably accounts for the fact that this is a, uh, a fairly modern laptop where the, the virtual machine is actually running on a solid state drive. So it's super duper quick to do any kind of security race on it. So let's just assume that it was about um, 10 to 20% 
slower uh, and not terribly long period of time. Now 100 gigs is not an incredibly huge drive in modern disk standards if your system had a, a more uh, conventional drive size of 256 all the way up to a terabyte in size then this would be significantly longer but either way it is a little bit longer and that does make sense so I hope this helps. Windows RE includes a command prompt so that you can do maintenance on the machine. However, the interaction with the Windows RE command prompt and the command prompt that you get when you use external media is very different. So let's first show the command prompt using Windows RE. I'll hit reset this PC. Restart now. Troubleshoot, Advanced Settings, and Command Prompt. The system will restart. I will not hit the Any key. I'm continuing to let it boot as normal. Windows RE is now going to land in an environment leading to the Command Prompt. However, the difference with using emergency recovery media or the Windows original recovery media is that I'm required to authenticate. So I have to provide a username and a password for the system I'm maintaining, which is a security need, which is actually a very good idea. So if somebody was to grab your machine and figure out how to get into Windows RE, uh, which is quite easy to do, they still need to log in as somebody so that they can do some system maintenance on the machine. Now, that's very different than, I'll shut this PC off, the interaction with the command prompt is very different than that if you reboot your machine with the original Windows Media. This is the latest uh, release of Windows 10 version 1909. That's the authentic um, 4 gig DVD ISO. And then I also have here the rescue media that we talked about earlier. I have two kinds of rescue media depending on whether or not the rescue media was built on a machine that supports BIOS firmware or UEFI firmware. We've set this computer up to boot from the um, the rescue media for the type of firmware that's on here. So now I'm going to turn the machine on, hit the NE key, so it does boot from this rescue media. And now let's see what the interaction is with command prompt on this machine. So here you would be doing maintenance on a machine you have physical access to. If let's say the machine isn't booting and you can't get into Windows RE, So we have to pick our keyboard as we've seen before and troubleshoot and command prompt. And you'll see I get in without authentication. So it, it assumes you're an administrator. You're coming in from the outside to do maintenance on the machine. A very big difference between the Windows RE command prompt and external media command prompt. The Windows RE also includes uh, uh, features regarding the startup settings. Let's look at those now. They are very important. Go to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and Startup Settings. And we'll look at all of these options in a sec. We first have to reboot to that option. We're not hitting any key, we're booting into RE. Okay, so there's several options. There's actually a, a tenth option. Um, 
that I have to hit a different key for to see. I'll do that one first. I'm going to hit F10 right now. Um, the tenth option is uh, launch recovery environment, which is where we were. In a way, it's like going back. So um, that's just essentially where we just were to get to this point. So in a way, it's going back. I'm going to hit F10 again and go through the other options. Debugging and boot logging would be for situations where your system's probably not performing very well and a developer is asking for some kind of information to assist you or you're perhaps a developer yourself and you probably know this the enable a low resolution video would be in situations where perhaps you have a video card that's not behaving properly or the drivers are not behaving properly and you want to at least be able to boot the machine up so you can see while you troubleshoot it so it would restart the machine into a very small simple resolution so at least you can use the keyboard and mouse and do some more troubleshooting Safe mode, there are three types of safe mode, just a native safe mode, and you can add to safe mode networking and a command prompt. These are excellent ways of getting in and doing system maintenance. In safe mode, the, the computer just boots up with a minimum number of applications running and systems and services are running. And it's, it's very good for doing fast, simple troubleshooting. And in some situations, it's really helpful for doing things to isolate uh, unique problems. The disabling of driver uh, signature enforcement is not something you would normally do. If you're a developer and you need to uh, essentially install and run an unsigned Microsoft driver, uh, there's security involved in Microsoft creating uh, or people creating drivers and having them signed so that they're certified to run in in Windows. And uh, if they're not signed, perhaps you are interested in using a a, de a driver you've developed yourself and uh, you haven't had it signed or you've you're experimenting with a driver that uh, is not officially signed that somebody else has given you you would disable this to install the driver it is a big security risk so do know what you're doing now the uh, disabling uh, of early launch malware protection is something I recently came across only because um, I was using a traditional method of uh, assisting somebody with the forgotten password. If you forgot your Windows password and you have access to the Windows media, you can utilize this simple process where you rename a file called utilman.exe. Uh, you just go through, there's tons of videos out there on how to do this. I'm not going to make one. Uh, once you do this renaming, um, you can click the ease of access button um, at the time of logon and the renaming process pops open a command prompt so you can get in and do some maintenance. Now, uh, around 1809, version 1809, Microsoft no longer permitted this from happening. And so you have to go into uh, the settings that I was showing you to disable the early launch malware protection otherwise it won't work so that's how I discovered the existence of this disabling of early launch malware may be helpful to you and uh, the last setting here is the disabling of automatic restart after failure I've never needed to do this myself but I could see why if if a computer bombs out and you want to do some post troubleshooting uh, while it's um, while it's in that state, I, I imagine you would not want it to restart. Maybe there's other needs for it as well, log file acquisition or something like that, but I could see that being fairly helpful. If you don't need any of these options, uh, you just simply hit enter and the operating system will reboot. The Windows RE safe mode reminded me of um, and the importance of showing different ways of getting into safe mode. Microsoft historically had a, a simple way of getting into safe mode, whereas you would hit F8 at the boot up of the computer. Um, they've appeared to have missed, uh, removed that feature and came up with some fairly convoluted ways of getting into there, unfortunately. One is um, what we've done several times is going to updates the security or recovery and hitting the the reset button which we've done already um, another method 
which we can demonstrate is simply going from a, a working machine, which may not be the case. You hold the shift key down while you press the power button and you get into the, uh, the same Windows RE environment. This is another way of getting into Windows RE, which is interesting. We'll do that in a sec. Another more interesting way of getting into safe mode is to uh, intentionally um, force power off the machine while it's on, which is not so good for it, and then um, obviously turn it on. And then during the sign in, when the uh, on the first sign that Windows has started, force the power off again and do this multiple times. Um, Windows RE will automatically start if, if it detects that the computer can't uh, do a normal reboot. And so you're just sort of forcing the uh, Windows RE to start through this process, which is kind of crazy, but uh, okay. Um, that's that's an interesting way of doing it. Um, the Windows RE, oh, there's a, other methods as well. I forgot to point the rest of them out. If you Google this, you'll see there, there's all kinds of other uh, ways of getting in. Here's this person talking about eight different ways. Shift restart, uh, which we'll show in a sec. Let's see, where's the next one? Uh, the interrupting the normal boot process, which I just talked about. There's um, uh, using a Windows 10 installation drive, which uh, could be helpful. There's a way of doing it. And they're talking here about making an adjustment to the BCD, which is, uh, I wouldn't play with that too much if I was you. And uh, booting from a flash recovery drive. And then the MS config, which is a very powerful way of doing it. Show that. The, the shift restart, which will do. And then the settings app, going to settings and then restart, which we've done several times. And they claim here uh, the use uh, F8 or Shift 8 F8 does not work. I, I, I'll, I'll keep poking with that, but I can't seem to get the timing correctly on that one. Now uh, let's let's demonstrate um, MS Config. This is actually a very good one. Again, unfortunately, it assumes the computer's working. MS Config is a, an area where you can go in and, and make uh, temporary or permanent changes to the boot up process, which is very helpful. Um, I would go to boot here and then pick safe mode and I could leave a, a minimal setting by default. I could boot just into a, a shell or I can boot with, with uh, including a network. And if you needed to, you can do active directory repair. Um, if you do accidentally boot if you do intentionally boot into uh, using the shell, um, you will only have a shell and uh, every subsequent boot after that will also land in the shell. So you would need to run MS config again while in there, getting access to this GUI and then unchecking safe mode. So what you do here is actually going to be persistent. So that's one way of getting into safe mode. I'm going to uncheck that. And hit a hit OK. I'm not. I didn't make any changes, so I'm going to hit exit without restart. And uh, another optional way from a working computer again is to hit the start button, get prepared to do a restart by hitting power, and hold your mouse above the restart button, and then hold the shift key down, and then hit the restart button while holding the shift key. Let go of the shift key and wait for a few moments. And this is how we get into Windows RE, technically. And from here, we can go back to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and then Startup Settings. And then we've been here before, we would simply go to Restart. And I might as well demonstrate the booting process into safe mode. It's gonna boot the computer and I've, I've actually detached the CD-ROM, so it didn't ask me for a CD-ROM boot, which is fine. And I'm going to go with uh, just number four, safe mode. I'll hit that button and wait for a few seconds. Windows will boot with minimal services and applications running. It does take a, a little bit of time, so I'll pause it for a sec, waiting for this to finish. Okay, it's almost finished. 
it's booted up the computer with a very simple simple interface no no background is there you're warned on the screen that it's in safe mode and uh, you're ready to do any kind of system maintenance and su subsequent reboots after this after you've finished doing your maintenance will go into standard uh, Windows mode, not in safe mode. You didn't make any sort of permanent changes to uh, msconfig. I'll show that here. Just simply type msconfig and boot is still sa not using safe mode. We got into safe mode a completely different way. So yeah, multiple ways to get into safe mode, all unfortunately fairly challenging compared to the traditional way of doing it, but that's what we have to do.